The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 5th of July. Hope everyone had a great uh, long weekend, great 4th. We're looking at the Dow down 138 to 34,280. Now, this is fascinating. Why? <clears throat> because there is the potential here, just on a very short term basis, to see some double topping formation, just like near term, like first couple of days of this week, shortened week that is, um, and I'll explain why. Look, the nine period moving average is still very strong over the 14 in the Dow. That makes the whole area of 31, uh, 34,140 to 34,060, these are the two moving averages that are still very positive, a key support. The MACD is good, not great, but good. The stochastic is kind of weak, is 67%. On balance, is vo volume is very weak. So my, my thinking here is that we've got a, kind of a divergence within the technical indicators. The weekly chart at a peak D is still very strong. Remember the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for four higher peaks to confirm a buy signal to a buy mode. That completes the designation of buy mode. It doesn't mean that the buy mode stops. It means that your objective was reached that first real big objective of a PD, and then other things can happen. That's exactly what we saw. 34,588 on the 16th of June pulls back for 1,000 points to 32,610 and has a very nice counter trend rally. I, I shouldn't say counter trend. We don't know yet whether it's going to go higher. My suspicion is we're bumping into some kind of resistance, and I'll show you why. Look, here's the S&P, SPX.X, S&P. Went a little higher than the 44, 48.47 high of, I think, around about the 16th or so of uh, June. It pulls back to the 14 period moving average at about 43.40, uh, 100 point down, and then it rallies and it makes a new recovery high. That new recovery high improved the weekly chart. Now there's a, there's a chance that we have an instant restart with a leg F, maybe an F slash B for an instant restart because the technicals are all very strong. And look at that monthly chart. This is a new leg C. The MACD turned up. Uh, the stochastic is at 72%, gives it room to go to the 80%, which would be great. But this is also where you can see some kind of uh, double topping. For instance, 44, 48.47 was the high. Let me just show you this right here. I should have put in the date that was on the 16th, same as the Dow. And then we retested it on the 30th, week and a half later, two weeks later, at uh, 44.58.48. Well, that's 10 points higher. That isn't just slightly higher. That is, that's higher. But we've had two days of consolidation so far. And that's and if you look at the MACD, the MACD is not anywhere as strong as it was on the 16th. It's good, but it's not, it's not great. The stochastic is over 80% at 84. It isn't as strong as it was, but this is rallying. It's strong. And on balance volume is just hinting that it is struggling a little bit. And uh, if you look at the relative strength, the relative strength is good. So all of us are saying, yeah, we could have a, a short term pullback. But so far, the nine is way above the 14. The price is way above the nine in the daily. The same thing in the weekly. All of this uh, really is instrumental in for me, for me to say. Other than a short position we took today in a particular sector that I think is just near term week and we might just go in for, we might be out by the end of the day or might be just two days or so. Um, mostly we're waiting for a pullback because there are some stocks that we have that we would like to add to that have done really well. I mean, one, I just, even today it's up almost 3%. I'm trying to get to add to the position we've got much lower down with a really nice gain in a very short term it just won't pull back the ones that are strong just remain strong in this environment okay with that said there is a chance for a little double topping pattern right here that's just a pullback that i'm looking at the qqq says the same sort of thing the qqq is the ndx 100 trading vehicle the investor qqq trust series and here we are 372.85 was the high, I think, also on the 16th. On the 16th, yep. And then it pulls back uh, down to the 350. 
58, uh, 57, 59 level. Peak A, this is a gray leg B. Could be even an alternate count. Nice move up, uh, up 40 cents today, 370.69. But the MACD hasn't crossed positive. The stochastic still weak at 73. The on balance volume is good. But that nine above the 14 says, don't mess with me. I am still showing internal strength. And that weekly chart's the same thing. Monthly chart is a very strong leg A. Uh, this is just an A. Can you believe it? From the high, the low of October at 254.36, we are still making every single month since then, we've made a higher high and actually a higher low. That is, that, that's the definition of a bull phase. So this is really positive. And the work I did over the weekend, I, I, I didn't have all that much time. The first couple of days of the weekend, I was out, out of town. Uh, but now that uh, I'm looking at this uh, over the last couple of days, you know, I did do a, a subscriber um, a newsletter on Monday, a very uh, quick one I put out. Well, I put it out. I did quite a bit of work for it, but it was um, didn't do very much at all. Uh, but it, it it at least kept me in the game here because I love to do daily work because it keeps it just yeah you, know, you got your finger on the pulse and that's the main thing when things are totally automated. You you're doing what you're supposed to do, but you don't. It's like sitting in a little go-kart where you're just like an inch and a half off the ground you really get a feel for the bumps etc just the same thing here but look at this the iwm the russell 2000 started to show some strength and then the more work i did over, over the weekend the more i said you know this constantly has a very good couple of sessions it even leads on certain days and then it just gives it up. And today it's down $1.26 at 186.39. The previous high was, um, that was on the 14th at 189.24. And then the, the level on Monday was 188.84. I mean, that's really close. But you can see the MACD, either it has to cross positive today or it's going to deflate lower. The stochastic is 72%. It's under the 80%. On balance volume didn't have as good, it had a good rally, but not as good as the one previous that went to that recovery high. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, still don't see leadership in the Russell 2000. Now let's go to, uh, yeah, let me go to the SMHs. The SMHs at this particular point are um, down a little bit, down 1.08 and 152.54. The move that it had around about the 16th was up in the 155, was it? 155.94 range. And uh, pulls back quite sharply to the 146s and it bounces. And on Monday, it went to 154.07. And I, the way I'm looking at this is that that MACD is still very weak. That stochastic is still very weak. That on balance is very weak. The relative strength is quite good, flat, but that nine period moving average is still above the 14. But my eye says that there's a chance that the SMH has pulled back a little bit here. That'll impact the general market a little bit. And then we'll see what happens because the internal strength is still pervasive in the industry. Very closely. I'll just go to gold as we go to the break. Gold is down three at 1930. I don't see gold moving just yet. I think it's starting to prepare in the weekly chart, but a prepare is not actually doing it. I'll be back. The Dow's at 138. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Fitness this hour, Wednesday, the 7th of July. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit DFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. Now it's now 142. That's coming back very nice. We have five. Here is that the, uh, the gold contract is pulled back. And as I said before, if you look at this weekly chart, you see the way the nine period moving average last week flipped to S, which means sell. This is just the technical indicator. It doesn't mean to say you have to do it, just that it flipped to negative. And uh, that says to me, with the MACD strongly down, with the, hist the histogram expanding, that's the vertical line between those two moving average. With the stochastic at 20%, it looks to me like the weekly chart wants to go to the teens, and then we'll have a look. But there is a bounce in the daily chart, and that bounce had to move up with the price, but not really as much as you would think. It was pretty good when you consider uh, the the eight nineteen hundred and uh, nineteen hundred level that was on the 29th of June, and today's high is 1942. But 42 points, you know, it does that. It's done that on the downside in a split second. So I'm just looking at gold, and I just don't think it's ready yet for prime time. I think it's priming to, to do that. But you can see that silver's acting way better at back the 200 period moving average, which was support, and then became resistance. Now it's resistance again at uh, 23.42, up 24 cents. Now, this is going to be really fascinating. Let me just put that in here. This is usually what I call a gray A and a gray B, B meaning I haven't yet gotten to a buy, a buy signal or buy mode. It's just trying to uh, elevate itself. But that weekly chart, that big red candle, I like to see big red candles filled at least halfway very quickly. Well, we're getting to halfway, and this is the second week. So if, if silver, and I've been saying for a little while, we don't have silver for subscribers to the opening call. I'm kind of fascinated by it, and I'm going to do a lot more work on it this week. But silver has, remember gold at some point, gold had a little bit of practical usage, but mostly it was a currency of fear. That's what I've always called it. Uh, gold is the currency of fear. It really relates directly to the financial, to the XLF and the financials itself. The other, because the countries, not just regular human beings, but countries and big, big institutions are the buyers of gold um, and make a difference. Silver, decades ago, because of the silver component in film, had a practical usage as well. Now there's some practical usage in the battery, uh, in the, the application and the way that 
it's processed uh, in the battery technology. So I think there's a bit of a difference now in looking at the two. So the one is an emotional uh, response to uh, anything that, that has to do with military or financial worries. That's the goal. Silver piggybacks. But mostly, I look at silver and say, if there's a practical application, you like, you know, about eight months ago, I think it was, I said, let's con let's continue to look at the uh, different uh, icons that I use. For instance, bonds I call bondy, uh, crude oil I call crudy, dollar I call dolly, gold is goldy. And the VIX is VIXI. And I say, Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and um, VIXI have, over the last six or eight months, really had completely diverse um, trajectories to what I had always looked at. There used to be a relationship that when the dollar pulled back, crude oil would, would rally, or when crude oil rallied, the dollar would pull back. When the dollar pulled back, gold would rally. And all of those are out the window. The VIX index, even the VIX index, where the VIX today is up 59 cents at 14.16. Uh, the Dow's only down a dollar, uh, 130. The S&P is actually fractionally down, down five. So all of those relationships have just... I wouldn't say they're out the window. They'll come back. But for me, they haven't got the same relationships. So that's the same thing that I'm looking at. And I've said that even in your looking at different sectors, consider that within the sector, you can have a whole diverse way. I mean, Intel is looking completely different to, say, NVIDIA. And I just keep thinking that way. Now, what's really important about silver is that there's a, there's a much higher level of consolidation if you look at the weekly and you look at the monthly chart, if that remains, there's a chance that at some point in 2023, silver actually has, on a percentage basis, a nicer run to the upside than gold. I'm just putting that out there, and that's kind of what I'm looking at. And now the next thing I want to move over is to high-grade copper. This is kind of a review, although it's a Wednesday. It'll be a review for the week. A high-grade copper is down a fraction. It's a 3.78 in the continuous contract, holding quite well. But look already what's happened in the weekly chart, lower lows and lower highs. What does that tell you? It tells you that copper's been struggling. And, you know, I always put it together with wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, because it's kind of international look at economies. And I, I was to say to you that there's been a slowdown, not a, not a crash or anything, but a slowdown in wood and if you look at the HGX and I like to always tie these things together the HGX is the went to a peak E this is the Philadelphia housing index how what how do you explain this under all the circumstances that we're looking at how do you say the HGX three days ago Friday went to an all-time high 538.36 was the high May of 2021 and 550, let me give you the exact figure. I'll have to type that in, so I've got it here on record. 550.44 was the high a couple of days ago. What's the Fed going to do? And this is the fascinating thing for me. If I was at the Fed, if, we, if I was using the parameters and all, all the trajectories and all the, all the different uh, uh, statistics that they get, the data, I'd be tearing my hair out of you know, what can I say? Um, it's just, it's it's frustrating because you don't have the normality that we would normally, that just, just the traditional way of looking at markets. When the housing sector is at an all-time high, you would expect the markets to be at all-time highs. So you'd expect a lot of things. So there's this huge divergence between the practicality and the, the reality. One thing we're looking at here, and I, I'm in this I'm in this category, uh, you know, for a long time now, we've just uh, just my wife and I in the house. We have you know we have family coming in and out and all that. But basically, so we don't have to have this kind of size place. Um, I, I mean, I like it because at eleven o'clock at night, if I want to play my clarinet, I can tootle away as loud as I want. It doesn't really hurt anybody. But you can't do that in, a, in an apartment or anything a complex like where you've got neighbors right next door. I got space around you. So for me, it suits me fine, 
But the, I have a lot of friends in the same category, uh, empty nesters. Where do you go? You sell your place for a really good profit because most of us got it, our houses decades and decades ago. Um, and then what do you spend the same amount of money to buy, a, a, say, a three-bedroom or two-bedroom with a nice study or something where you can have guests? I, you know, that's the dilemma. That's why the houses aren't moving and they will move if there's some kind of a reason. I have an idea where there could be a resolution, but it isn't here yet. So I'm saying that the divergence that we're looking at between and the housing sector, when in fact they should be down at the lows if this is such a bad economy. Uh -uh. And if anybody's traveling lately, full planes. Um, in fact, on the plane I was on the uh, on Sunday, 25 people got $1,000 each to get off the plane so because it was very, very hot from uh, Salt Lake City. And they, to get the, to play, to take off that. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So to follow up on that JESS, which is the U.S. Global JESS ETF, uh, traded a new recovery high on Monday. It's trading right now 21.59, uh, down six cents. But look, this is a leg D in the weekly chart. There's that U-shaped pattern that we're talking about with the potential double tops for some of the indices uh, this week, just a potential. 
Uh, and yet this one's gone quite a bit above the high that was made earlier this year. And the weekly, ch the monthly chart has gone to a leg B, trying to get out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So that's, uh, you know, that's just telling me that there is strength. And if you look at stocks like I showed this last week, JetBlue, uh, JetBlue trading at 9.05 up 4 cents, has the same pattern, hasn't gotten to the left side high that was made back in, was it March or February? February, the week of the th third, uh, 9.35 was the high, uh, and it's uh, trading pretty well. I mean, on Monday, it hit 9.08. So, um, and the week, month, weekly chart's looking way better. The monthly chart still looks horrible. But the reason is, and, and I'm pretty sure I thought about this earlier on, I mean, I've had a year of quite a lot of traveling and just uh, stuff that we just needed to do, couldn't do it over the last two years and just needed to do it. Um, and uh, quick trips, trips, trips nevertheless, and some of them fly. And this is what the, the airlines have done. First of all, oil prices have been stable to down, number one. Number two is they've cut back on the flights a lot so that they have full flights and it's easier for them on a full flight every once in a while, just as it doesn't happen every time, but it, it was such a hot day uh, taking off on Sunday that they couldn't fly. This is the same thing that happened to my wife and I when we were in Sydney back in 2021, was it? Just as the flu uh, outbreak, the, sorry, the COVID outbreak was starting in uh, Sydney, Australia. I even took a picture of the ship that was the I said to my friend, 3,000 passengers on this huge ship. I said, wow, everybody comes off and it goes back on. And then two days later, I look in that same princess, whatever it was, was the, was, the, was the boat that went off to Japan. There was this whole situation. Anyway, so really what's happened is they, they've decided, um, the airlines, that we will cut back. And then they haven't got a choice. I overheard uh, some pilots talking at a, a restaurant we're at. Um, God, he had a loud voice. Anyway, he was talking about he was a Delta pilot. and He was talking about what's going on with the Delta pilots and all that. And they just short-staffed. I mean, they are pushing the limits. And therefore, they, they would love to expand. They'd actually like to have their full fleet out there with all the pilots and they would have all these passengers. So what they've done is they've tightened it up. And that means that they are starting to make profits. I just showed you JetBlue. Let me just look at Delta. Uh, Delta Airlines. Oh, look at that beautiful chart. <laughs> Delta. They always say, you kinda, it's got a Peter Lynch thing. you got to buy the stock to pay for your airfare. So look at this. It's up 48.55, up 60 cents today. A beautiful A, B, leg C in the weekly chart. Uh, starting to improve to try to get to that high of the March of 2021, which is up at the 52.28 level. And here it is, only 48.57, like three, I mean, you know, you're th three, four, five points away. You could do that. This is really good action. And they've got fewer flights, but they are packing the planes like sardines. Um, no, that's just being too polite to the sardines. Anyway, so this is really fascinating to me. And I think that what we're looking at here is this is the first time that the airlines in, a, in, a, in the last uh, five years, especially since they've made everything so a la carte so that you pay for almost everything. I mean, no food, seven hours, six hours or something, <laughs> no food. Um, anyway, so with that in mind, I'm saying that this, this market, this whole economic environment is, is a tough one to analyze as an economist because you've got your left hand, you've got your right hand, which you're always waving because on the left hand, this and on the right hand, that. But in fact, there are those, you know, I, I took about a bifurcated market. I said the other day, it's not, it's, it's trifurcated. It's, it's quadrupling. I mean, there are so many diverse things that we, each one would give you a different opinion to what you had in the other, other uh, using the other data. So, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I love what's going on. That's why we are still along the Dow. I like what I'm seeing. I like the fact that the um, you've got this rotation going on. And there is there is a big pullback in some of the AI stocks in some of the others in the AI area, not necessarily purely AI, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we, we, you know, we've got a stock that's in that area, but it's not quite, and it's doing really well. Um, I wish we had more. I would like to get more on a pullback. 
And that's the way this market should be. You should be wishing that. Remember, Dave, Dave White, you said rather than wishing you were out, by the way, wishing you were in. What are you saying, wishing you were out? What, 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 rather be wishing you were out when it goes against you than wishing you were in when it's, oh, I can't remember. The exp sorry, Dave. Uh, but it, it was a great expression. Someone will come up with the exact wording. But in fact, this is one of those cases where you would like to be adding. It's better to be wanting to add than to be in the wrong position. That's really what I want to get. Better to be out wishing you were in than in wishing you were out. Oh, thank you, Dan in the Den. And, and what a wonderful expression that is. Um, all right. So we've got that out the way. Look at the IYT itself. This is the industrials. This is the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund. This is a very nice move, very much like the uh, jets, the um, the U.S. airlines, the CSX. Um, this is CSX, which has also had a very nice run. This is the rails. So uh, when you look at this, you've got to say this economy is really doing well. If you go at any airport, you see thousands and thousands of people. And, uh, you know, people, the, 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 the tickets are not inexpensive. These are, you know, these are uh, tickets are expensive. So, and people are paying up for it. So at this particular point, the Fed must be saying to themselves, well, we've got deflation in certain areas. Let me just show you this here. Here's wheat, dust wheat. I made a peak E right at the 200 period moving average. Remember I was talking about this two and a half weeks ago. I said, whoops, we're right here at the 200 period moving average. Watch out for a pullback from this, this leg E and then it became a peak E at the 200 period moving average. There were also some FIB numbers, but that wasn't as important to me as the 200 period moving average. Look at that slide from the 760s down to where we are today, 662. Look at um, soybeans. Now, this is a little different. Soybeans are acting very well. So, yeah, you've got the diversions with, within the grains themselves. The other day they were in unison. A sudden spike to a leg D, but the breakout has the nine period moving average way over the 14. The MACD is strong, stochastics at 82%, on balance volume is strong in the daily. The weekly charts has improved tremendously. So that's a good sign. Look at the corn. Corn has not only gone down, but it's gone below the left side. This is the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, in leg A goes to peak A, and it comes straight down and takes out the left side low. And look at this, peak C1, C2 in the monthly chart. So wheat is down very sharply from the 600 area down to the 482 level we're at right now. So that's a deflationary aspect. Not quite because you've still got, uh, what was it? I said soybeans were acting. Uh, yes, yeah, soybeans were acting quite well. So that's the type of thing we're looking at. Big divergence all over the show. Trying to be in the specific areas that are working. It's another reason why I said to subscribe. We don't want to try to go to areas that haven't been working, that we think will work. We want to go to what's working, and that's where we are. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dallas Down. 109 coming back a little bit. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so uh, we've got a question about BioXL Therapeutics BTAI trading at 9.42 up a dollar 56. There was ever there's a biotech, so there was some bad news coming out all of a sudden on on the 28th of June. Doodle 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 doodle, it's trading in the 1617 area. Bam! The next day, the high is five is 9.46. The low is 5.88. Well, the rule of three that Dave White used to talk about works here, but I have a different kind, a different interpretation of the way I use gaps. This one fits the the two to three sessions to try to close above the gap high, and that would be 9.46 high today. So far, it's 9.55. It's trading at 9.40 right now. So if it's able to do that. What happens is normally I'd be looking at the middle of the candle, the ugly candle that's at about 760, as key support on any pullback. And then it should worm its way towards the 726 level, which is the, the pink nine period exponential moving average. It's a huge distance, but in biotech, sometimes you get this. But if you look at the character of this particular stock, I do not like stocks that have a character of big candles. Uh, red candles that um, don't get fully filled and then it goes down to another big gap down or red candle. And this one has that. So it, now it's got the third one in a matter of months. It had an, the week of the, 60, the 10th of March, it had a high of uh, 30.53 and a low of 2026. Then it comes back, can't make that high. Fails and then it has an ugly candle with a lower low than that gap previous gap down candle and the low here is seventeen dollars twenty seven to seventeen I mean ten bucks and then the last one was the biggest of all it went from <clears throat> on the thirtieth the week of the thirtieth of June it goes from eighteen nineteen point oh seven to five dollars and eighty eight cents so my eye says it is a biotech. And we see this happening all the time in not all, but many biotechs. And you can actually just look at a chart pattern and say, oh, yeah, that must be a biotech. By the way, the monthly candles work because they have these long wicks. Look at this. as long wicks at that, at that high that was made back in July of 2020 at 71.50. So all I can say is that, Dan, I know you've done your homework on this. Um, I'm not going to disagree with anything that you've, you've typed up here, but I am going to say that 
the way I would look at this is that the low that was made, because within two days it didn't even touch or didn't even get close to the low of 8.46. So, of he would have loved to have heard that. Sorry, 5.88. Um, and here it is over two dollars higher. So, this is a very good sign saying there was a little too much emotion attached to this particular sell off. Therefore, there can be a decent bounce. Is this the low? Oh, it's such a tough thing to do in the biotech. I think what you do is perfect because you do you do your homework. You're always looking at what's coming out, what the FDA says, what they've got in the pipeline. That's the best way to do it. But I would just say to you, as a longer term buy and hold, which is something that you like to do every once in a while, my eye says that BTAI, BioXL Therapeutics, should try to get to the... Um, between 12 and 14 over a period of some weeks, the quicker it does it, the better the, the, the quicker the, that it does it, the quicker the weekly chart, which really took a hit, the quicker the technicals will start to improve. And that's what you want to see. The big question for me is, if it's a long term buy and hold, where would I put a stop? Because if it takes out a certain level, perhaps it's going to go down to such a low point that you just sit there and you have no choice but to treat it as a long-term buy and hold. I don't want that. I'm going to say to you, if it gets close to the doji candle of the 30th, which has a high of 712, 714, and a low of 642, if it gets even close to that, I'd be a little careful. I wouldn't be adding to it. I'd rather be adding on strength at this particular point. And also, only I would add, I would have a certain... Well, I'm not going to tell you what to do because you're always very good at that. But what I personally would look at is to split positions and still only have not even more than a half position until I really feel comfortable that there's news coming out that's going to counteract whatever the negative was because the last time it didn't do that. It hit the 200-period moving average resistance, and that just repelled the price. It could not get above it. Hope that helps you. Next question came in. Could I, oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, could I look at the XLF and Bank of America? XLF, yeah, nice move up over the 200 period moving average. Last week I was saying that's probably a target and that's probably going to be a magnet level, and it is. 33.72 down only 18 cents now. Is this a brand new leg B or is this a G slash B? Because it never took out the original low, I'm calling it a G slash B. <clears throat> probably. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I haven't. And that is to give a preference in my wave count to say rather than G, it's probably a B, but I need to be careful and say G and call it a BG. That would just have a total confusion. So I'm calling this a G slash B. The technicals have improved. The stochastic's okay. The on balance volume is lousy. The rental strength is quite good. And the nine is over the 14. So I do like it, and it's gone to a leg C in the weekly chart. Could this be the slow grind to the upside that we've been anticipating should happen to the financials at some point? I'm beginning to think this is the start of it. It might need more consolidation. And Bank of America is, look at the weekly chart. This is really telling you it needs more time. So let's look at it again. What's today? Wednesday. Let's look at it again, maybe Friday or Monday. I want to see what it does over a period of days. If it's really holding well. That could be the sign to say, you know what, the financials are going to finally participate and then lead. That's what we really want to see. So a couple of other questions came in. Could I, oh, yes, quickly. Apple, uh, it doesn't have to be quickly. Apple made a, I'm calling this a peak C. There's no other way I can count this. So I think there could be one little pop to the upside to make that leg D. And it, it looks to me, <clears throat> just on a very short-term basis, that Apple's becoming a little toppy. Uh, not that anything is technically wrong, but if I use my usual indicators, look, 194.44 was the high on Friday. A slightly lower high with an inside bar on Monday. Uh, Monday. And today, almost, almost an inside bar, but not quite. And it's a leg D in the weekly chart. But if look at the technicals in the weekly chart. This is just fantastic. Everything is positive, except one little thing is giving you a clue that we're a tad toppy. And that's the on-balance volume is overbought. That's the only thing I talk about is being overbought and oversold. I don't use that technique in any other form. I do use it for the on-balance volume, the blue line. But look at the stochastic. Since April, it's been flat in the 95-ish area, in the mid-90s. That's 
black is good. You'll see no textbook that says flat and above 8% is good. They always say overbought above 8%, oversold below 20%. I said, that's completely wrong. Change the text for that. It's really positive if it's holding above 8, 90%, especially 95%. I'll be back. Dow's down at 122. S&P's down 6. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Bowser Chapman. You're back. Dow's down 120. In this final segment, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to skip minis, which I just said, work on these minis. I'm expecting some kind of a digestive phase, just a the near-term digestive phase, and it's very select, it's rotational. Um, we'll see exactly what happens. So Tesla made new recovery high. And one of the things about Tesla that I've been noting for some time, and unfortunately we don't have Tesla, I should really have gone. Once it crossed positive on the nine-period moving average right here, the 170-something, uh, back around about the 22nd of May, I should have just said, okay, everything's there, nice, wide, nine-period over the 14, MACD's good. I just, I, I was so busy looking at it 
um, just because I have all these questions about Tesla. But as as the, the months have progressed, my thinking here is that there's a chance that Apple's going to, uh, Amazon's going to produce the same kind of thing that Apple did a long time. You know how Apple got to became, become a, a service-oriented company, so they got this income stream. So Tesla's going to do the same thing. It's not just about cars. It's about their, um, their charging stations. I mean, they're going to be able to charge for their charging stations or the others <clears throat> that need to use it. I think Tesla's building a really nice uh, um, income stream base. But that's the back to the ranch, I am expecting some kind of a pullback today. We've got some of it. But most, most importantly, I want to see how the QQQ and the SMHs and a couple of other areas, how they unfold and how they close over the next two days. That's really important. Have a great rest of the day. Great programs coming up. And don't forget, tight dollars. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.